did as up to now, I considered V um, to be RK F0 lower star of C of some nice, for some nice smooth family over Y0. And in fact, um, I said, if this is equal, how to get from the corresponding variation of hot structure, a Higgs bundle. But of course, the same remains true if this is just contained in here. Now, restricting to direct factors here um, is a reasonable thing to do, because due to results of the linear, I know that this representation here is really simple. So and what we need now is uh, Simpson's correspondence. In some sense, since Simpson's correspondence is um, putting a relation between V, just any local system, on Y0, and it puts it in relation with Higgs bundles E theta, where, as I said, E is a nice square and sheaf, and theta a linear map from E to E tensor omega 1 of Y, let's say log S, with the notations from the last talk. Now, I'm very vague about the statement, because in the form I presented here, it's not shown. It is shown, first of all, I forgot conditions on the left and right hand side. I will only make this precise in the cases we need. And secondly, um, this correspondence is, as far as I know, only shown if y0 is a curve or if y0 is compact. So the general case, y0 open and uh, quasi-projective higher dimensional, I think, is still open. But um, fortunately, in all cases where I need it, this case is also covered. So in some sense, um, Simpson's correspondence, in some sense, it's like a big black box. And to tease, uh, to tease uh, Michael, um, <coughs> uh, I just said, um, it's for me, it's a big black box. And all the nasty things about analytic geometry, like curvature estimates, estimates, and all the things are hidden in this big black box. I will give you an example in a moment. OK, so um, we need something like this. Um, in the most general form, it is, it is true for variations of hot structures, using, among other things, the semi-simplicity. So let me put here a special case. So I consider, consider V um, variations of hot structures of complex hot structures. This unipotent monodromy. And, and this is something I didn't mention up to now, and I will never mention it again. Every polarization of hot structure for Mu is polarized. This is already need here, uh, used here for semi-simplicity. So I have something like this, together with a map to the Higgs bundles. E theta of degree zero. Now on this side, I have the semi-simplicity. So this is a direct sum of irreducible factors. And here, this corresponds to the property polystable. So I have polystable Higgs bundles of degree zero. Now, of course, this is not a one-to-one -one correspondence. I have to add here conditions which guarantees that the Higgs bundle is coming from a polarized variation of hot structure. You can more or less guess um, what the conditions should be, but I do not need it. I just need that I have morphism in this direction. OK, so this is a part of Simpson's correspondence which I will use. Um, <clears throat> So I have to say a word about this uh, polystability. So recall um, definition part i, if h is ample, then for me the degree of 
the sheaf E is always C1 of E times C1 of H to the dimension of Y minus 1, um, ample on Y, and let's say E locally free on Y. Um, the slope, mu of E, is equal um, the degree of E divided by the rank of E. Um, and secondly, polystability or stability is the usual definition. Um, if I want to say that E is stable, if you make notes, leave some play, place. Um, then I just say for all f in E, rank of f smaller than the rank of E, um, it follows that mu of f is smaller than mu of E. Now this would be the general definition of um, stability. Um, if I want to be this here to be a stable Higgs bundle, Then, as in one of the talks before, I have to assume that F uh, is stabilized by theta, so theta of F is contained in um, F tensor omega 1 with the decorations we have. And there's another thing. Usually, one just says here for all non-trivial subbundles, here I put that the rank is really going down. There's a reason for this, because formally, this definition also makes sense if I replace ample, for example, by nef and big, and this we have to do later, then at least as a definition, it works. But pay attention, changing the definition causes some problems at some places. Okay, then, semi-stable, um, if and only if, for all f in e, now I do not need the rank, um, mu of f smaller equal mu of e. Here again, in the Higgs bundle case, same condition. And um, fully stable, in any case, is just the direct sum of stable. Okay, um, this looks pretty harmless. Um, so I have to say here, um, what is the right polarization? I said here, ample is okay, but nef and big is also okay. And one can show in Simpson's article, this is poorly stable with respect to a polarization, but it's, pos it's sufficient here to say that the sheaf H is uh, nef and ample with respect to Y0. So one can easily extend uh, Simpson's correspondence to poorly stability with respect to the sheaf. It just gives the same. Okay, so we have some statement like this. It looks pretty harmless, but let me try to convince you that um, something is happening here. But let me first say you what the way I see Arakanov inequalities. Arakanov inequalities are direct consequences from Simpson's correspondence. in particular from the word polystable. And there are kind of equalities um, are exactly saying that for the bundles in question, it's the same whether I consider stability in the sense of Higgs bundles or stability. So to say it more precise, Arakulov equalities in some sense are, are equivalent to the fact, and this I write only in the situation which I consider at the end of the last section. If I have such a X bundle, 
then Arakanov equality say that the EPK minus P should be stable as locally free sheaves. So inequality are fully stable as Higgs sheaves. And Arakanov equality says that, in fact, the stability is already sheaf by sheaf. In all cases where we have reasonable Arakanov inequalities in this uh, situation, this principle works. OK, so let me give examples. Um, <clears throat> let me first give um, one example I mentioned already to Michai. Um, where it becomes clear that a lot of curvature estimates is hidden in Simpson's correspondence. And this is a proof of a result. So this would be part D somehow, applications. We have the theorem of Collar. Uh, let me first take the case dimension of y0 is 1. So we are over curve. There's a result of color um, which says in the situation of, of a variation of hot structure, so V, let's say an irreducible um, C variation of hot structures, then there are two possibilities. Either V is unitary So it's a unitary representation, and they're regarded as a variation of hot structure concentrated in one B degree. So concentrated in one by degree, P0, K minus P0. And unitary is, in fact, equivalent under Simpson's correspondence to the fact that the Higgs bundle is the zero map. Okay? So this implies already that it's only in one by degree. If the Higgs bundle is a zero map, and if I have two by degrees, I would have a direct sum of two Higgs bundles, which by Simpson's correspondence gives me a direct sum of two um, uh, representations. So irreducible implies that here this can only live in some one degree. But this is uh, well known, but the second case is um, Oop, oop, oop. Let me write this right. If I took, if P0 is the minimum of all indices P, this E k minus P, P unequal 0, then it follows that this corner piece, P0 is ample. Let me sketch a proof. I mean, color proof this really with curvature estimates. I mean, he says, um, uh, I calculate curvature, and he says he makes this for non-irreducible, and he shows that it's a direct sum of something flat and something ample, and the calculation really uses curvature. But here, the proof is completely trivial, because what can I say? I have here my E. Let me assume for simplicity P0 is 0. So I have e k 0, and here I take any quotient L, invertible quotient. Let's start with something like this. Now, um, I have my Higgs field. So here I have the map theta to um, e k minus 1, 1, tensor omega. I drop the and so on. And here I can just go with the 0 map to 0, and of course this commutes. So in different terms, um, L, comma, 0 is a quotient of my Higgs field E, comma, theta in the language of Higgs bundles, compatible with the Higgs field. So, but this thing here is poorly stable. So a quotient has to have degree bigger than this degree. This degree is 0. So it follows that the degree of L must be bigger than 0. So E, K, 0 is a locally free sheaf on a curve, and every invertible um, quotient has strictly positive degree, so it's ample. Okay? So this shows perhaps that really 
um, Simpson's correspondence is a very useful and very strong statement. Okay, so this was the baby application. Fun. Um, A just says um, if I have an irreducible C variation of hot structures, I might have an idiotic one. Okay, I might have taken one where the Higgs field is zero. This translates to the fact that this is a unitary representation. Okay, and that the Higgs field is of the form E theta equals zero. And this is somehow an exceptional case, which in all my states meant I have to exclude. Hopefully, I will not forget. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm afraid. I oh, know it starts again. Okay, so it's like my computer. If it doesn't work, you have to restart. Okay, um, so the, the right oracle of inequalities. So let me theorem. Um, this, I think, is in this form um, by myself and Suo. Um, I stated dimension y equals 0. And um, I take v to be an irreducible, non-unitary variation of hot structures. Um, and then the statement says that um, <coughs> that the slope of E10, of EK0, oh, wait, that's <clears throat> okay, minus the slope of E. 0k, so the two extre extremal parts, um, is bounded by, I hope I do not make a mistake, I think it should be k times degree of omega 1 by log s. So some, some statement like this. Um, <coughs> what does this has to do with Simpson's correspondence? Let me give, say this part one, let me give a special case. Uh, let me assume that k is equal one. So I have families of curves or abelian varieties, for example. And then the statement is, I mean, those two, in this situation, I can assume them to be dual to each other. Um, and adding up, I see that mu e k zero, uh, one zero should be smaller or equal 1 divided by 2, because here I have two factors, um, times degree omega 1 by log s. And as I said before, the equality implies that the bundles E1, 0, and in fact E0, 1, are both fully stable as a sheet. And moreover, is a morphism between um, bundles of the same slope. Because this is um, this statement here. I mean, this the difference. This no, this plus this is just the slope of this side, and this is the slope of this side. So if one has equality, one has something like this. So it is related to poly stability. Um, 
Yeah, maybe, <coughs> maybe at this point at least I should give one proof. So the proof is um, not very complicated. I mean, consider the, it's very typical for what is happening. So let A be a subsheaf of E10. Let write the image in this form. Let's say the saturated image. Some questions? A proof of uh, statement two, OK? So take this situation. So I could say that A plus C is a sub -X bundle. Um, so the degree must be smaller equal 0 since we have poly stability. So I can say, but on the other hand, I can also consider the kernel of theta restricted to A. This is also a sub -X bundle. So it has also a degree smaller or equal 0. So now I put this together, and I see that the degree of A is smaller than um, degree of the image, which is degree of C um, plus rank of C up of C times degree of omega 1y log s, since this is invertible, I'm over a curve. So now this has a trivial inequality that this is smaller than the degree of C plus the rank of A times degree omega 1y log s. And this, um, using that this is a sub -X bundle, so the degree of this sheaf must be more negative than minus this. So I can replace this by degree of A plus rank of A times degree of omega 1y log s. And now if you take the special case that A is a whole of E10, you already get um, this inequality. OK? But now you can go on. Yeah, at least we have some place. To get the stability or the polystability, you can go on. You can just say, um, oh, by the way, sorry. Here I said polystable, but since I assumed irreducible, in fact, this is stable. So polystable was not wrong, but uh, misleading. OK, so but now I can say if um, I have equality, a rackle of equality, then I can also, then I can take A to be any subsheaf in E10. And um, then I see the slope of A which is um, degree divided by the rank, is smaller or equal. Um, <coughs> OK, let me write this. This is degree of A divided by the rank of A. This is smaller or equal, 1 half rank of um, E10 times degree omega 1 log s. Oh, yeah. Mm. OK, because I can throw this over, I can divide by rank A. And then I have smaller or equal the degree of this here. But um, I wrote nonsense. Sorry. This here is too much. A half of this degree. OK? But now, since I have equality um, at this place, 
this is the same as the slope of E10. So I see already same stability, but I can do better. Because obviously, if A is a subsheaf, this here must be a strict inequality. I replace rank C by rank A. OK? No, sorry. Uh, Mm. No, this here must be a strict inequality because the degree of, no, sorry, the last one, because the, here, this here is a sub Higgs bundle, then it follows that the degree of A um, plus the degree of C is strictly smaller than zero because I fear irreducibility. So this inequality must be strict. And this implies that E10 is stable. OK, so the proof of this statement using Simpson's polystability is quite easy, at least if one does not mix up the inequalities. OK. Um, one can say a little bit more in this situation. and. Um, this I'm just mentioning to have some notations. Let me give an example, a typical Higgs bundle. Um, and let us assume that my omega y plus s is a square of an invertible sheaf. So L is a logarithmic Higgs bundle. Then I can consider the Higgs bundle L plus L minus 1. So this is 1, 0. This is 0, 1. And the Higgs isomorphism is the obvious one. This is just the standard isom the isomorphism. So the degree is 0. And obviously, this is polystable as a Higgs bundle. So it comes from a local system. So this corresponds to some local system L. And here one can go on and one can say that the equality also implies that V is more or less L, perhaps tensorized by some unitary bundle, U unitary. And if one goes a little bit on and uses a little bit of arithmetic theory, one can also say that Y0 is a Shimura curve. But I will neither say what Shimura curve means, but in any case, it's a bounded symmetric domain. OK. Um, but perhaps for some people here, it's nicer to have the following statement. This also implies that if I take y0 tilde now sitting in a, G, tilde. I mean, here I said if I have a family of abelian variety, is a family of abelian variety, then this here is a bounded symmetric domain. And the statement is that this here is a geodesic. for the Hodge matrix. So this oracle of inequality has um, a lot of implications, some in differential geometry, some in arithmetic geometry, some in um, um, algebraic geometry. In some sense, this is perhaps not so surprising. And in fact, there even is a topological counterpart. If you, and now I'm saying something we are Please don't ask any questions. There are those uh, articles of um, <coughs> Garcia, um, um, of Garcia Prada, of Mobong, and Cossiar about the Milner Wood inequality for the Toledo invariant. And in cases, this is some in the topological invariant for representations of the fundamental group of a compact curve or in some sense, also of certain higher dimensional varieties. So in some sense, um, there's an overlap for variations of Hodge structures with a compact base. And then, as it turns out, 
the Milner Wood inequality is the same as the Rak Arakelov inequality, and the results they are getting today in case that the Milner Wood inequality is inequality are very much parallel to what we know in the case of variation of hot structure. So there e even is a topological counterpart of this story, at least in some cases. Okay, um, let me give, after I formulated this, um, another example. <coughs> uh, sorry. A races with Shimura. Um, I should put here instead the assumption if um, the Iraq with an S equality for all V non unitary re and irreducible sitting inside R1 F0 lower star of C of X0. Then this implies this property and Shimura. Okay, so it's not enough to have this for one system, but one needs it for all systems. In fact, if you only know this for one um, local system, there's also a result. This is due to Martin Miller and myself. Which says, if there exists one non-unitary and non-trivial <coughs> V inside Again, F0 family of abelian varieties. Then this is equivalent to the fact that Y0 tilde in AG tilde is a Kobayashi geodetic. And this is equivalent to the fact that if AG bar is a Mumford compactification. So a total compactification as considered in Mumford. And for me, this is smooth with the boundary a normal crossing divisor. So at least in the stack sense, so let's say uh, put here a level n structure. Um, then it follows that phi upper star omega 1 AG log the boundary of AG, the natural map to omega 1 y log s splits globally. So if you only have one direct factor, nevertheless it has some nice um, geometric interpretation or differential geometric interpretation. And for me the surprising thing was that Kobayashi geodesics in AG, bar, AG tilde is in fact a very algebraic notation, not the definition. What does it mean, Kobayashi geodetics? I think some of you might not know. Kobayashi geodetic means the following. I go to the universal cover, and I want to measure the distance between two points. Now I do the most idiotic things. I join it by disks until I end up here. And now I measure distances like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. And I take, define the Kobayashi distance between the two points as the infimum of all the distances obtained in this way. So it's a very differential geometric or topological notation. And the, but the statement is that at least for bounded symmetric domains, in particular for AG, uh, Kobayashi geodesics, so geodesics for this strange metric is a very algebraic object, in particular one can show using this that such geodesics are defined over Q bar. So it's really algebraic. Okay, but this is a different story. I wanted to come here to other points. So, what about higher dimensional situation? Pardon? Uh, sorry, there's one... Um, thank you. <laughs> this... Arakelov 
equality. Thank you. Uh, the proof is um, the proof is not in fact the proof is not too complicated. I mean, one uses Kobayashi geodesics are the same as Karadori ge geodesics, so one can uh, consider um, projections to disks. Okay, I mean the universal cover of Y zero. This is a disk itself. So to say it's a Kobayashi geodesic, it means that the Kobayashi matrix defined like this. Um, coincides with the Poincaré matrix on these disks. And then you are going with projections to disks, and then um, you can show that the Kobayashi geodesics are also geodesics for the Kara Theodori um, matrix. I think it's called like this. Okay? And then you start, um, you start somehow um, playing around with this um, Arakulov inequality, and as it turns out, um, if you have, how to say this? Um, so then you are using some classification um, of um, Kobayashi geodesics due to Abate, and uh, you compare it with this Arakulov type inequality, and you do a little bit of calculation. It's, it's not a very deep theorem. Okay, but maybe I can say more about it after the talk, if you're interested. Okay? Okay. Um, so, what about higher dimensional situations? <coughs> Hmm? You mean the Kobayashi metric of the compactification or the open part? Um, no, here, this is a Kobayashi geodesic, this is just for the open part. Right. And then, I mean, of course, you have to extend something to the boundary, and there you are using the properties of the Mumford compactification. Uh, because Mumford gives you a quite explicit description of what happens along the boundary. Okay? <coughs> Okay, so what about the higher dimensional case? Um, in principle, things remain the same. So let me mention why bigger than one. Um, K equals one. Then essentially the statement written here remains true. So the theorem says, and this is now um, Kang Tsuo and partly Martin Muller. Um, again, I have V, uh, irreducible, non unitary. And um, what one gets is the inequality mu of. E one zero um, <coughs> minus mu of E zero one is smaller than the slope. Now I have to put a slope omega one y log s. So it has the same inequality, and um, again. If one has equality, this implies that E01 and E10 are both semi-stable. Now here on this part, I've wrote semi-stable. On this part, I've wrote stable, or I erased it polystable. And the big problem is, to get rid of the semi. I do not know whether it's true that one can show in this situation really stability. I do not believe so. There's a, an additional supplement. So in addition, or 
<coughs> an additional numerical condition, which I will not state here, implies stable. Now, unfortunately, I forgot some assumptions. Unfortunately, we have to make the assumption that the sheaf omega 1y log s is nef, and omega y s is, semi -am is ample with respect to y0. So the higher dimensional case, one needs this type of assumptions. I think those are reasonable assumptions. Assume you have a compact situation, so assume that y is sitting in AG, then those assumptions are automatically true. So for the boundary, um, I, think, I do not think that one can any, show anything without this type of assumptions. So in principle, um, in, under this we have this here, and additional numerical conditions imply stable. And once one has stability, then as in the surf case, one can show that y0 is again Shimura. So this was the case dimension by bigger here, k equals 1. So it remains the case um, Yeah, and there, I have no idea. I do not even have a conjecture what an oracle of inequality could look like. Uh, maybe there is none. Maybe um, <coughs> maybe there is no reasonable way to formulate a numerical condition, and the oracle of equality should be replaced by those two by those two conditions. But even under this situation, we do not know exactly how to get geometric uh, implications. So since we do not know how to go on, um, we studied with Müller-Stach some easy case. So consider for a moment the situation. Um, consider M to be a type 4, a, bo a locally bounded symmetric domain, so SO n2 modulo o n cross u1. So for example, moduli of k3 surfaces, or more general, what um, was called here, um, hot structures of k3 type. So the corresponding hot structures has the <coughs> values, I think, 1 and 1, or something like this. OK? Um, what can one say in this situation? So let me fix um, from the beginning m bar a Mumford compactification. Um, And the problem we wanted to study is to use this machinery of oracle of inequalities to study um, Shimura surfaces in um, M bar, or in M. Now, I use the word Shimura surfaces, but you do not need to know what a Shimura surface is. You can reply it whenever you like by bounded, uh, locally bounded symmetric domain. But anyway, what are the possible surfaces? There are only two. So you have example one, which are the Hilbert modular surfaces. Uh, 
um, which means y tilde is isomorphic to the product of two copies of H. And y is this divided by an arithmetical uh, subgroup. You have the Picard situation, which is the same as a two-dimensional ball quotient. So y tilde in this case uh, is a ball, two-dimensional complex ball. Um, and maybe this explains why we are considering M. Because the problem is, if I take A2, this does not contain ball quotient. This only contains Hilbert modular surfaces. A3 contains ball quotients and Hilbert modular surfaces, but uh, this was too complicated. So M is somehow in the middle, and it contains both ball quotients and Hilbert modular surfaces. So this seems to be the first um, but very simple example where I can study such problems. OK, let me say a little bit <coughs> what the variations of Hodge structures look like. So now I have to say something. I'm not taking uh, necessarily the variation of Hodge structure of, the, um, of a family of K3 surfaces. I take the largest irreducible part. So the part which is responsible for the E21 and uh, E1, no, E20 and E02 part. So the irreducible part on M has the following. I have E. Zero, I have E two one zero. This is invertible. I have E one one, which is necessarily the same as E zero zero tensorized with the dual T M minus log the boundary in M on the Mumford compactification, and I have E zero two, which is just E two zero dual. So I know this variation of Hodge structure. If I happen to be to have a bulk, uh, if I happen to be a Hilbert modular surfaces, so if I have Y uh, Hilbert modular surface sitting in M, then on Y, usually Hilbert modular surfaces, for me it's really sitting in A2, has a simpler variation of Hodge structure. So on Y I have an F10 and an F01. And this is more or less like the one I said before. Since I assumed this to be irreducible, I can say this is here um, given by a sheaf L i, and this is L i to the minus 1, where L i square is isomorphic to omega i, which is sitting in omega 1 y log boundary. And where this is a direct component, induced by this decomposition. This decomposition induces a direct sum decomposition of this sheaf. And I take one, they have two direct summons, omega 1 and omega 2. And the parametrizing Higgs bundle looks like this, if it is irreducible. So I have two of them. Let's call this here the local system, again, Li. And then this inclusion, uh, sorry, in M, no, in A, now, if I embed this in M, the corresponding variation of Hutch structure should be L1 tensor L2. Um, L1 tensor L2 minus 1 plus L2 tensor L1 minus 1. And L1 tensor L2 both minus 1. So this would be a typical 
in variation of hot structure. So this inclusion is given by the fact that the restriction of this Higgs bundle is of this form. So um, in the ball quotient case, <coughs> so if I have y in m ball quotient, so for ball quotients, the variation of hot structure is f10, and I have f. 0, 1, and this now, it's not dual, so this is F1, 0, tensor again with the logarithmic tension sheaf. And um, the E, the variation of hot structure coming from M, is of course just E2, 0 equal F1, 0. E11 equal F01 uh, plus F up 0, 1 dual. And E02 is F10 dual. So it's a direct sum of this variation plus its dual. I wrote this in this very explicit form. Because if you want to study variation of hot structure, you can do the following game. I can consider here in this situation, I always have E to 0 on E to 0 prime on whatever variety I have. I have here E prime 1, 1, tensor omega. And I have here E prime 0, 2, tensor omega. And the composition of this here, here I have an S2 omega, is called the griffith yukawa coupling, theta 2. Now those cases, so surfaces are distinguished by this, because here I can say theta 2 obviously is 0 on y bar. And here, in this situation, I can say that theta y bar upper 2 is non-zero. Okay, so those two surfaces can be distinguished in this way. Okay, so <clears throat> what is the motivation to study uh, the, in the simple case such surfaces? And such, uh, motivation is twofold. The first thing was a try to understand some old results of Herzebruch and Höfer about, Griffith, about um, proportionality of curves on modular surfaces. So um, one had the following theorem, which is Herzebruch-Höfer. Um, I consider C sitting inside of Y sitting inside of M. And the result says some numerical inequality. So the first says um, if Y is a Hilbert modular surface, then one has three, no, two. C bar square. C bar is, of course, the closure of C in Y bar in some compactification of Mumford type. Um, plus two times the degree of the boundary divisor on C is larger or equal minus KY times C bar plus CY times C bar. Okay, so it's, a, in, it's an inequality completely in invariance of this surface. The same thing holds for ball quotients. So then one has 3 C bar square plus up, 3 degree S C bar is smaller than KY minus times C bar plus 
uh, sorry, this is SY, <coughs> SY times C bar. So it's uh, again a numerical inequality. And the result of Herzogwoch and Hofer says if one has equality, then this implies again that C itself is a bounded symmetric domain, or that C tilde sitting in Y tilde is a um, subball. Okay, um, this is one side. So um, we wanted to reprove this, and it turns out that although he has no uh, relation with hot structures, this is exactly the oracle of inequality, and this here is exactly the oracle of equality, only translated. So in some sense, the oracle of inequality also occurs in Herzebruch and Höfer's um, articles and book on uh, ball quotients. And it generalizes to divisors in um, Shimura subvarieties of M quite easily. But there's another direction. I can also change the game. Here in this statement, I assume that Y is a Shimura variety. What if I assume that Y is an arbitrary surface and C is a Shimura variety? So I can, and this I do because I do not want for time reasons to rewrite the equations. So if I assume that C is a Shimura curve, and Y sitting in Y, which is an arbitrary surface, um, and the whole thing sitting in M. And I ask myself, um, what do I get as inequalities? The funny thing is, the equalities are turning around. Of course, here I cannot say Y is a Hilbert modular surface, but I can use the description using Refit's Yukawa coupling. So I can say, in this case, I can say, and this makes sense on every surface, theta on y bar 2 is unequal 0, and theta of c bar 2 is also unequal 0. In this case, I erase ball quotient, and I write theta y bar 2 is equal 0. Then I get, under this assumptions, the equality in the other directions. And the equality says somehow and the equality says somehow and now I make a non-mathematical statement which I will make more precise in the last minute. C is or Y is Shimura infinitesimally near C. So it's some kind of infinitesimal condition. So the reason for interest um, comes from the following. I think most of you heard about the André Ouart conjecture. What is the André Ouart conjecture saying? In this special case, it would say if Y contains um, a Sariski dense set of complex multiplication points, then this should be equivalent to the fact that Y is Shimura, in fact, in all dimensions. The conjecture is um, this part is easy and well known, and the conjecture has this implication. So if you believe this, you would say if Y contains infinitely many, and now this is a surface, Shimura curves, then it should follow that um, Y is Shimura. But this seems to be an overkill. Infinitely many Shimura curves might be too much. If it is a statement from algebraic geometry, finitely many should be enough. And the corollary of this type of 
corollary says, if Y in this situation contains um, a set CI, I and I, of curves with either one or two. So all must be in the same class. And if the number of points in I is uh, large, the number of indices is larger than, and now I have to write, I think, Picot number of Y bar plus delta of S Y bar. So this is a Picard number. This is the number of double points in the boundary. The whole thing square, square plus, again, it runs. And I think plus one. So if the number of curves is larger than this number, then it's enough. Then it follows that y is phi mora. So this result is, in fact, not very deep. It is more experimental. But I think in connection with the andre Uhr conjecture, um, it is reasonable to look for the number or the smallest number of curves which have to lie on a surface or on a higher dimension variety to force this to be a Shimura variety. Let me mention at last point, because I forgot it here, 